Hello, everybody. Hi. Hello, 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 everyone. Good afternoon. How are you? How have you been? Hello, Yvette Talita. Hi, Daisy. Talita, I miss you too. How are you? Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to prayer for healthcare workers. How has everybody been? How is everyone? How is your family? The children? How is your workplace? What's new? What's new? What's going on? How is your workplace, your colleagues, your family, the children? Have you been accountable? Have you been reaching out to a friend or a family member? Have you been outside? Have you been for a walk? Yes, no? Hopefully you have. Today's a beautiful day. It's a nice day for a walk. Hopefully you've been out there. Well, on this end, we're doing well. Thank God. We're doing very well. Uh, work is good. Family's doing well. The children are behaving. The weather's beautiful. We still do our daily walks. Everything is going well. And I hope and pray the same for you all. 
So welcome, welcome to our time in prayer. Let's get started. Let's get started with our song, Great is Thy Faithfulness. I hope everyone has been holding on strong. We continue to pray for our health care providers. COVID is not out of the way yet. COVID is still doing its um COVID is still doing its damage. Um, we are praying for our frontline workers, providers. Uh, we are still practicing social distancing. I hope and pray that this is going to end soon. Um, and uh, so we are diligently, diligently calling on God for our teachers as well as our child care workers, police officers, paramedics. Our nurses, our nurse practitioners, PAs, doctors, lab technicians, wherever you are in the healthcare field, in the hospital, administration, environmental services, lab, radiology, nurses' aides, we are praying for you. Rehab department, physical therapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, we are praying for you. And everyone that's out there in the trenches performing all the diagnostic testings you're in our thoughts and we're still praying for the families those who mourn those who mourn we are praying for the families let's get started with our singing what do you think great is thy faithfulness morning by morning new mercies we see all that we need His hands has provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. And I pray that this promise is engraved in your heart, trusting that God has all of your needs. All of your needs. He's concerned about all that you need. He's concerned about your well-being. God is concerned about you. God is concerned about your family. God is concerned about your well-being, your health, your physical health, your emotional and your spiritual health. God is concerned. Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, his mercy we see. Can you sing along with me? Sing along with me. You will find that song in your Google. You'll find it in a songbook. You'll find it anywhere you need. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassion. They fail not as thou hast been. Thou forever will be greatest. Sing with me, greatest, greatest. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. endureth 
with thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand be sing with me greatest 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 morning by morning new mercies I see oh Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto needed everything that we need his hands hath provided so today we just want to sing and shout thank you lord for everything everything that he provides to us day by day his mercies his mercies endureth forever day by day he provides for us day by day he makes his will known to us day by day he sees that we are in need of his mercy his grace he see that we are in need of salvation he provides for us let's pray our praise together is taken from psalms 1 verse 6 Psalms 1 verse 6 For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous but the way of the ungodly shall perish Father God in heaven thank you thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us Thank you, dear Lord, for this beautiful hour that you have allowed us to come together to pray, to seek your face on behalf of our health care providers and family. Lord, we want to proclaim your promise today. The promise that's in your word, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves in prayer. If we will will forgive our sin, you will heal the land. You will comfort us. You will give us grace, peace, and mercy. And so today, dear Lord, we are Focusing on that promise, we want to pray for healing. We want to pray for forgiveness of our sins. We want to pray for our health care providers, for protection. We want to pray so that we will have the desire to seek you each and every day. Thank you, dear Lord for making all things right in our lives. Thank you for your mercy and your grace. We pray in the most humble way in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hello again, everyone. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. How has everyone been? Welcome 
to our time in prayer. How is everyone? Are you doing well? How are the children? Have you been accountable? Have you been spending 30 to 60 minutes exploring the Word of God, the Bible, the Word of God? The Word is alive. The Word is life. The Word transforms us. Do you remember that the Word is like a double-edged sword? It pierces through the heart, the soul. It examines us. The Word examines us. The Word examines our heart. You know all the negative thoughts that sometimes we have? The Word is like a mirror. When we read the Word, it helps us to reflect on ourselves, our hearts. We want to read the Word to help reprogram all the negative thoughts that we have exploring our mind. You know, the thoughts that sometimes traps us. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are trapped. We are trapped by our thoughts. We are trapped by our actions. We are trapped by our negative deeds. And we are trapped sometimes by bitterness and anger and sadness. Maybe we are trapped by not having enough faith. You know that mustard seed faith we talk about? So when we read the word, it helps us. It helps us. It frees us. It heals us. It protects. It, it replaces all those negative thoughts. It replaces all the negativity that we sometimes exhibit towards ourselves. Mm -hmm. Towards ourselves and others. And so today we want to do like Paul did. All praises to the God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father and the source of all comfort. God comforts us in all our troubles, situations, so that we can comfort others. There it is again. So that we can comfort others. Are we good stewards of comforting others? Or are we simply looking for comfort or to be comforted ourselves and keep it? Keep it to ourselves. Are you looking for a blessing so that you can keep it to yourself? When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort as God has given us. And this is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, 3 and 4. All praises be to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is our merciful Father. God is the source of all comfort. Every situation that you need help with, God is the source of all comfort. God is the source of comfort for the children. Lord have mercy. For those of us that are home, that are homeschooling, God is the source of your comfort. Because I cannot imagine. I, I know it's tough for me. It's tough for me with them. They're older. My children are much older and I'm still uh, struggling. Some days and most days I am still struggling. Imagine the moms and the dads with toddlers mm, and school age. Whew. God is the source of all comfort. God is the source of comfort for your colleagues. God is the source of comfort for your co-workers. He's the source of comfort 
for your finances, for your health, your physical health, your emotional health. He's the source of comfort where there is no way out. When it seems to be impossible, God is the source of your comfort. I want to encourage you today, as I've been encouraging you for the past month and a half. Faith. Faith. Believe. Talita, yes, it's hard. But every day, if you take one little step at a time, by making this simple little prayer, by making this simple little prayer, Father, I want to try. Father, help me to believe. Father, help me to know your will. Father, help me to understand. Father, help me to hear your voice. If every day you make this little prayer, I promise you, it gets easier. Yes, so God is the source of all comfort. He comforts us in all of our troubles. And I'm going to throw in, in all situations. Notice he didn't say, notice Paul didn't say that we will not have trouble. Notice he didn't say we will not have moments of difficulties. Notice he didn't say that you will not have moments of fear and discouragement. He didn't say that. Because remember, Jesus himself had all those moments of difficulties. And so what's exciting about this verse is that there's provision for us. Yes, there's provision. The provision, the Holy Spirit, God is the source of all of our troubles. And all our troubles so that we can comfort others. Now, here's the big catch. So we can comfort others. Have you reached out to anyone? Mm -hmm. Have you been a source of comfort? Have you used your gifts and talents to be a source of comfort for someone? Are you keeping it to yourself? You know, whatever gift you have, no matter how big or small, your gift is unique to you. Your gift is unique to you. And so your gift, when God was creating us and he was providing all of us with our individual gifts and uniqueness, God's expectation for us is to comfort others. When they are troubled, we will be able to give them the same comfort God has given us. The word of the Lord. And this is taken from 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. So I encourage you, when you have a few minutes to digest that word, digest the word. And uh, as a preacher, I've heard online says, microscopically, take that word and digest it in small little chunks and apply it, right? Read the word, apply it, and act on it. Read, apply, and act so that our faith can grow. Okay, before we get to our devotional, we're going to sing another song. And please put your prayer requests. Prayer requests, pray for Sylvia. Yes, we will pray for Sylvia. And I wonder how Gilbert is doing. I wonder how Gilbert is doing. I don't see any information on Gilbert. But we will pray for Gilbert as well. If you remember, the family was requesting prayer for Gilbert. We are praying for our colleagues. Yes. We are praying for our colleagues. We are praying for the frontline workers. 
Okay, let's get to our next song. Our next song is called Wonderful Merciful Savior. Wonderful Merciful Savior. You can find that if you Google it, you will find it. Wonderful Merciful Savior. Wonderful, merciful Savior, precious Redeemer and friend. You would have thought that a lamb could rescue the souls of men. Oh, you rescue the soul of men. Counselor, Comforter, Keeper, Spirit we long to embrace. You offer hope when our hearts have hopelessly lost the way. Oh, you hopelessly lost the way. You Almighty, infinite Father, faithfully loving your own, here in all witness you find us falling before your throne. Are oh, we falling before your throne? You are the one that we pray. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always hunger for. And if you are confused, Fran Reynolds, thank you for your comment. Sometimes I am so confused about life. Fran, you are not alone. Fran, you are not alone in this journey about life. You're not alone. But I have good news for you, Fran. Hold on to your faith. The more you spend time in the Word, dissecting the Word of God, the Bible, the more God will reveal His will to you. 
God will reveal his purpose to you. God will reveal what you need to do, your journey, your task, your unique gift, your unique gift. You have it. Friend, you have it. Trust me, you have a beautiful gift that no one else has. All of us, every single one of us, we have a unique gift. We have talents that no one else have. And so as I encourage you, I encourage you to continue to encourage others. Wake up every day. Remember, we shared those simple, simple practical methods every day. Every day, wake up and spend 30 minutes, 30 to 60 minutes in prayer. Every single day. Number two, journal. Express your thoughts. Express your concerns. And remember, thanksgiving. One thing you are thankful of. Whatever it is that you're thankful for, put it in your journal. Thank you, God, even if it's today for the sunshine. Thank you, God, today I had, I don't know, whole wheat cereal. Thank you, God, today, oh, God, thank you, I enjoyed the mango. Whatever it is, if it's one thing you're thankful for. Thank you, God, today I enjoyed spending time on the phone with my sister. Thank you, God, today I enjoyed my walk by the lake. Whatever you are thankful for, one thing, I am certain, I'm sure you could find one thing that you can put in your journal to be thankful for with a heart of thanksgiving. And then thirdly, after you pray and read your Bible and you spend time journaling what you're thankful for, lastly, be accountable. Accountability Call a friend, call someone, encourage them, pray for them. Okay, fine. You don't want to call someone? Maybe you might want to volunteer. Do something to encourage someone else. Go to a food pantry, go to a local church, go to a shelter, a homeless shelter. Join, join a group that's helping others internationally. Participate in an activity where you're helping and encouraging someone. I promise you, friend, the more you practice, the more you practice, the more you spend time doing these good deeds that we are we just described, you will grow. You will grow to find your purpose. You will grow to appreciate your abilities to share God's love with another person. You will grow with appreciating your time spending, fellowshipping with other people. You will find satisfaction. You will find your purpose. You will. Trust me. Trust me, you will. Okay, let's get to our devotional. Let's get to our devotional. Our devotional again is taken from the same scripture we just read in 2 Corinthians 3, chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 and 4. And I'm going to read in your hearing. I encourage you. when we um, part from one another to uh, read that chapter. The chapter is entitled The God of All Comfort. So I'm encouraging you to take some time to read 2 Corinthians The God of All Comfort. I'm going to read in your hearing. I'm going to start with verse 2. I 
I love the way that Paul always greets. He always has an opening with a greeting. Grace and peace to you from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace and peace to you, healthcare workers and families, from God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, the God of all comfort. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort, who comforts us in all our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. I'm going to read on because I think this is going to help someone today. I'm going to read a little further, okay? If you don't mind. For just as the suffering of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ, our comfort overflows. Can you receive that in faith? Can you receive this statement in faith? For just as the suffering of Christ flows over into our lives. Well, you know what happened with Christ, right? He went to Calvary for us, for our sins. For our sins, for our difficulties. For our discomfort. Every pain that we are enduring now, Christ himself has experienced it. Ah, so Paul said, for just as the sufferings of Christ flow over into our lives, so also through Christ our comfort overflows. I am claiming that in faith. If we are distressed, listen to this. Paul said, verse 6, if we are distressed, it is for your comfort and salvation. If we are comforted, it is for your comfort, which produces in you patient endurance of the same sufferings we suffer. And our hope for you is firm because we know that just as you share in our sufferings so also you share in our comfort 2nd Corinthians chapter 1 verse 2 through 7 I encourage you I encourage you to read that in your time and so our devotional that's taken from the 100 Most Important Bible Verses. I love this little book. And as we read our devotional and our commentary, our title is called Consolation Prize. Consolation Prize. The Apostle Paul began his second letter to the church in Corinth, just as he did with other letters, with a brief introduction that leads straight into thanksgiving. Grace and peace. I love it. Paul's cause for thanks, however, set this letter apart. You can be thankful for comfort only if you've known the pain of suffering. True. True. Hmm. Paul certainly did. And so did his Corinthian audience. So does every individual who reads these words today. All of us. All of us. Every single one of us. 
in one way, one shape, or the other, have experienced some form of pain. Though levels of personal suffering differs, pain and heartache are universal. Yet, amid that sobering truth, Paul gave reasons for praise. God's comfort is at hand in every type of trouble. God's comfort is at hand. Amid the sobering truth, Paul reminds us, Paul gives us a reason to praise, to sing, to shout, to dance, to be happy. Why? Why? God's comfort is at hand in every type of trouble. God's comfort provides meaning and solace to our pain. The original meaning of the old-fashioned sounding word tribulation covers a lot of ground. It can mean distress, affliction, persecution, and or simply great misery. God's comfort fits any in every situation perfectly. Amen to that. Though Paul, through Paul, excuse me, through Paul, God provided even more good news. What's the good news? There is a positive, productive side of suffering. As God comforts you, you learn how to better comfort others. As God comfort you, we learn. We learn how to better comfort others. So I guess we're in the right field, right, healthcare providers? This is different from simply being sympathetic towards people and their problems. The Greek word for comfort implies action. It means to come alongside and help. It means to come alongside and help. Action. Action. To do. Hmm. How are we doing that, right? Accountability. Here it is again, right? God actively comes alongside you with strength, encouragement, hope, and healing. And you get the ability to do the same for others. When you are struggling with difficulty in your life, When you are struggling with isolation, when you are struggling with depression and hopelessness, helplessness, inadequacy, when you are struggling with physical pain, with financial strain, family struggles, remember to reach out to God and then to others. Remember to reach out to God and then to others. Don't ever feel so defeated, don't ever feel so defeated that you could not, that you cannot reach out to God and not to someone, others. 
The truth is, the truth is, there's always someone that has it worse off than we do. Mm -hmm. You think your situation is bad until you hear somebody else's story. You think you have it bad until you hear somebody else's story. And I'm going to pause here for two seconds. You know how we complain about the car? I don't know. It's an ugly car. But the person with the bicycle wish they had a car. And the biker complains about his bike. The person that's walking wish they had a bike. And then if you travel to a third world country... If you've gone to Haiti, for example, in the village, the person that's on the mule or the horse buggy wish they had a bike. And then the person that's walking wish they had a mule. What is my point? Somebody, there is someone struggling. The situation, their situation is probably worse than your city. You never know what people are going through. You never know what people are going through, what they are experiencing, what pain that they're experiencing. So God is challenging us today. God is challenging us today to look beyond. Mm -hmm. You got it. Thank you. Look beyond your situation. Look beyond your pain. To have faith. Faith to reach out to God and have faith to reach out to someone. Trust me, God will inspire you. God will inspire you. He will tell you who needs to hear from you today if you promise to put this practice into action. All right. So when you are struggling, when I am struggling, when we all are struggling, we that's the nature of men. Unfortunately, sin, sin, because of sin, all of us, all of us will experience pain and suffering. Mm-hmm. So Paul is reminding us that when we are struggling with difficulty in our lives, remember, remember, here's your charge. Remember to reach out to God and then to a neighbor, to others. God provides comfort to help you become a comforter like him. In conclusion, when you're facing tough times, when I'm facing tough times, when all of us, when we are facing tough times, my challenge to you today is to follow Paul's examples. Examples in the book of Corinthians, you'll find it when you take some time to meditate. Praise God for the comfort he's already promised. And then ask God to help you use your experience to bring comfort to someone else. Praise God for the promise of comfort yes he's not a god that will lie three thousand there are three thousand promises in the bible for you and me for us and so one of one of those promises is that he's already promised to comfort us we just have to claim it we just have to say help lord help me i need you to comfort me so praise God for the promise that he's already provided. Then ask him, ask God 
to help you use your own experience, your own experience as a testimony, as a word of encouragement. Oh yeah, I've gone through that and this is how I dealt with it. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. I had a situation to, similar to what you were experiencing and this is how I dealt with it. Oh yeah, you see how you could strengthen somebody else? Oh yeah, oh I prayed this prayer, I read this song, I sung this song, and this is how I was blessed. You see how you can help someone else? Oh yeah, I took this class. And I had this teacher, your own experience, your own unique experience. Remember, right? You are shaped. You have your own unique beauty, your own characteristic, your own beauty that you can only share with me. There's something that you have. There's an experience that you have uniquely to you, designed just for you, molded and shaped just for you. You can only provide that to me or someone else to bring comfort to someone else. As God comforts you, you learn how to better comfort others. And so Paul reminds us, Bless be the God and Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of comfort, the Father of mercies, the God of all comforts, who comforts us in all our tribulations, difficulties, that we may be able to comfort those who are in any trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. And so I encourage you today, as we pray for our healthcare workers, I encourage you today to proclaim this promise. And you will say to me, Herlene, why do I need to proclaim this promise? Well, If you exhibit just a little bit of mustard seed faith, I promise you, it gets better. It gets better every day. I can't promise you you won't have difficulties. I can't promise you that you won't have challenges. I can't promise you that you won't like the way you look in the mirror. I can't promise you that you may have a day or two where you'll struggle. I can't promise you that, but I can promise you that God will never leave you. He's always by your side. So let's get into our psalm, and then we're going to get into our prayer. Go ahead and put your prayer request in the comment section or inbox us. Inbox us your prayer requests. And even, even if we, even if you're shy, I'm sorry, if you're shy and it's a private request, it's something that you need for us to pray for you, if you inbox us, we will call you. We have a chaplain on board. She has been calling and she's been praying and even have a few minutes to discuss biblical question. So if there's something that you're struggling with and you're not sure, we will pray for you and pray with you. All right, so we are going to 
um, read our Psalms, Psalms 86. And you know, the book of Psalm is one of my favorite books. As I've shared with you before, there is nothing that you need to pray for or pray and ask God for that you will not find in the book of Psalms. David, the man after God's own heart, was truly inspired. And so today we're going to read Psalms 86. And then we're going to sing a worship song. A song of faith. It's called, You Are My All in All. You Are My All in All. Psalms 86. And I will read in your hearing. If you have your Bible, you can read with me. Psalms 86. Hear, O Lord, and answer me, for I am poor and needy. Guard my life, for I am devoted to you. You are my God. Save your servant who trusts in you. Have mercy on me, O Lord, for I call to you all day long. Bring joy to your servant, for you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Lord, you are forgiving and good. O Lord, abounding in love to all who call you. Hear my prayer, O Lord. Listen to my cry. Listen to my cry for mercy. And the day of my trouble, I will call to you, for you will answer me. Among the gods, there is none like you, O Lord. No deeds can compare with yours. All the nations you have made will come and worship before you, O Lord. They will bring glory to your name. For you are great and do marvelous deeds. You alone are God. Verse 11. Teach me your way, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear your name. Teach me your ways, O Lord, and I will walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I may fear that I may fear your name. I will praise you, O Lord, my God, with all my heart. I will glorify your name forever. For great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the deaths of the grave. The arrogant are attacking me, O God. A band of ruthless men seeks my life. Men without regards for you. But you, O oh Lord, are compassion and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. Turn to me and have mercy on me. Grant your strength to your servant and save the son of your maidservant. Give me a sign of your goodness that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, O Lord, have helped me and comforted me. For you, O Lord, has helped me and comforted me the word of the lord psalms 86 
You are my all in all. And we're going to pray for your requests. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb Again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I am dry, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb. Taking my weaknesses, you are the Lamb of God. The God who comforts. The God who heals. The God who delivers. The God who provides. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. What are your prayer requests? What are your needs? What are your struggles? Bring them all to Jesus. He knows, He understands. There's not a situation that he can't fix. Have faith. Bring it all to him. He promised the God of comfort. He promised he cannot lie. Reminding us that I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you believe with all your heart, if you surrender 
your heart, ask for the forgiveness of our sin, he said. He will heal us. O Lamb of God, O Lamb of God, the supremacy of his love for you and I to redeem us from our wicked ways, to redeem us from our difficulties, our tribulations, our pain. O Lamb of God, providing to us unconditional love, there's nothing you and I can do to turn the Father's love away from us. There's nothing that we can do to make him love us more. His love is unconditional. There's no merit attached to his love for us. There's no merit His love is supreme. It's unconditional. Let us pray. Father God, Father in heaven, creator of the universe. Creator of this earth. Creator of all the beings and animals. Creator of humankind. Father, Thank you. Thank you for being our good father. Thank you for being the father that cares. Thank you for being the father that loves unconditionally. Thank you for being the father that provides Ah, the Father that knows and see it all. We are grateful. We are happy. We are thankful for the sovereignty, for your sovereignty. You know our past. You know our today. And you know what is to come for us, Lord. And so as David cried, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Oh, Father, you loved us so much. Your love for us has no measure. Your love for us is infinite. We want to claim and receive this gift of love that you have for us, Lord. We're crying, yes, thank you for your love. Yes, thank you for the gift of salvation. Yes, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, the lamb. Thank you for the lion of Judah that protects us and guides us along danger. Thank you, dear Lord, for the comfort that you provided for us through the Holy Spirit. Father, today we are presenting again our healthcare workers, frontline providers, essential workers, family and friends, Lord. Here we are again today, Lord, we are in need of you. 
We want to claim the promise that you are our comforter. We want to claim the promise that you are our provider, our safe haven, ah, our cornerstone. You are the peace that surpasses all understanding, joy, health for our painful bones, hope for our hopelessness, rest for our restless souls. Father, please, dear Lord, nigh with us. Come dwell in our midst. But more importantly, Father, more importantly, we surrender our hearts to you that you may transform it. You may preserve it. That you will help us to have the desire to dwell in your word and prayer each day so we could understand your way and will for us so that we may live out our purpose, not only for our brothers and sisters, but for your kingdom. Father, draw us close to you and please don't let us go. Father, we lay all of our burdens, we lay all our fears, we lay all of our concerns. Please, dear Lord, the master physician that you are, that you will visit Sylvia, nurse Sylvia and all the other providers, nurses that are struggling with illness, that are struggling with the physical, emotional, psychosocial, spiritual maladies, Lord. Well, Lord, you created us, right? You created us with all the intricacies and delicacies. You've created all the Perkinji fibers. You know how the arteries flow and the veins flow. You know how the nerve endings connect. You know how the liver functions in the stomach, the spleen. You know all things. You know all the specificity of the body. When the doctors don't know, you know. And so, Father, we are claiming in the precious name of Jesus for healing for our bodies, mind, and soul. For Sylvia, for Gilbert, and everyone else that's struggling with whatever form of malady, I know you got this, Lord. We are claiming it in Jesus' name. We are comfort for those who mourn, who have lost their loved ones. We are praying for our families, for our children, for our neighbors, for our neighborhood, for our church families, for our friends, for our teachers, for our child care providers. Lord, we call upon you for the police officers, the firefighters, for the government of our country. We call upon you for our international friends and colleagues. We call upon you for our clinic in Haiti that's making preparation to heal and help those that need it most. In a third world country, dear Lord, what is going to happen to those that are struggling, only you know. Have mercy. Lord, there's so much more we can ask for. But while we're asking, we get to say thank you. Thank you for love. Thank you for life. Thank you for oxygen. Thank you for the breath of life. Thank you for food. The meals that we take each and every day. Thank you for allowing us to turn our light switch on, turn the faucet to have water, water to shower, to wash our clothes. Thank you, Lord, for the things we take for granted. We want to say, I'm sorry. 
Thank you for blessings and healing upon our families and children. Thank you for the cars we have, the bicycles or the horse buggy, for the legs we have to walk back and forth. And Lord, if we have a wheelchair, thank you for that too. Thank you so much for this forum where we can come together in prayer. Thank you for visiting our nursing homes, our lonely elderly patients. Thank you for visiting our inmates in the prisons. Lord, open their hearts and pierce your word so that they may be transformed and they may come to know you and to love you and accept you. Dear Father, please, thank you for visiting our homeless population, Lord. Thank you for providing comfort for them. Lord, Oh, there's so much we can say, but we just want to say thank you. We just want to honor you. We just want to give you praise. We just want to shout joy of thanksgiving. Shout joy of glory. Shout joy of praise. Thank you, Father, for those who are graduating, who just finished or completing their school year. Thank you for our nurses. Thank you for our doctors, our rehab department, nurses aides, lab technicians, the virologists, the microbiologists, the radiology department, the paramedics, Father, Thank you. We love you, Lord. We love you. We love you so much. With a humble heart, we express this prayer in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. I'll give you a few minutes to complete your prayer. We'll say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive our sin as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. O Lord, our strength, our redeemer, our comforter, our healer, and our provider. Amen. 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 Postal workers, yes, they are essential. Yes. We are praying for Mr. Thomas. Yes, we are. We continue to pray for Thomas. Still in a coma. He is on antiviral medication. Vitals are much better. Great news. Vitals are better. Okay. Good news for Mr. Thomas. Good news. 
Being in a coma doesn't mean that he's not getting healed, Dion. We're going to claim healing for Sylvia and Thomas and everyone else. Everyone else that is struggling. Amen. Well, thank you for joining us. Remember, you are special. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for your gifts, your talents. Thank you for uh, being soldiers. Until next Monday, God willing. Remember, in between next now and next Monday, if you have any need, any needs, if you have a prayer request, if you need someone to just listen, we have a chaplain that's available for you. We are happy to pray with you and to listen. May God bless you. May God answer you when you are in distress. May the name of the God of Jacob protect you. May he send you help from his sanctuary. May God grant you the desires of your heart. May God shine his face upon you and your family. Thank you for all you do. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for being good stewards of accountability. As you take care of the spiritual, don't forget to take care of the physical. Don't forget the physical. Don't forget to go on your daily walks. Don't forget to go for your sunlight. For your oxygen, don't forget to journal. Remember, journaling. 20 to 30 minutes of walking, 20 to 30 minutes of Bible reading, spending time with your Creator. Spend time with your Creator. I promise you, the more you do it, God will reveal Himself to you in mighty ways. You will see your life transforming, miracles occurring all around you. And so, my friends, my healthcare colleagues, providers, frontline workers, essential workers. What is your name? My name is Herlene. My name is Herlene. Um, Vera, what's this? Uh, Vera, Vera Dina. Dina, my name is Herlene. I am a nurse practitioner. I practice acute care medicine. And my desire, my desire and my primary focus is holistic medicine. Encouraging healing for mind, body, and soul. For the physical, spiritual, and emotional health through holistic modalities. Okay, my dear friends, thank you again for your time and prayer. Thank you for your time 
and fellowship. Thank you for coming together to help us lift the name of Jesus to prayer for healthcare providers. Honey, are you asking me if honey is good? I'm not sure. What is your question about honey? Is there a specific question? I'm happy to answer for you. In the meantime, I praise God for all of you. I thank God for all of you. Remember, God is the God of comfort. God is the God of comfort. So for the week, I want to encourage you to read 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Sec, no, Herlene, not honey, Herlene, H-E-R-L-I-N-E. H-E-R. L I N E Herlene or Lynn L Y N N if that's easier for you. Yes, I want to encourage you to read the book of Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. That was our meditation. The God of all comfort and Psalms 86. If you haven't read the book of Habakkuk, I encourage you, I encourage you to read the book of Habakkuk. It's a mighty little book. You will find a lot of blessings in it. Let's close in prayer. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you. Thank you for your beauty. You are beautiful beyond description, Father. So we thank you. Thank you for your majestic, splendid sovereignty and power. Thank you for being our Lion of Judah. And thank you for being the Lamb that was slain for our sins. That we could come and ask for forgiveness. We could ask for forgiveness and you are ready to forgive us when we confess. And so today, dear Lord, as we confess, we ask for your redemption transformation transformation so that we can be in your image father we pray for those again who mourn we pray for the sick we pray for the poor and the needy we pray for the lonely we pray for the hopeless we pray for the physical emotional and spiritual maladies we pray for this gentleman that just asked to pray for his mother. And dear Lord, we continue to give you glory and honor for healing of Sylvia and Mr. Gilbert. And dear Father, Lord, cover our health care providers, cover our essential workers, our teachers, cashiers, supermarket attendants, postal workers. Cover our homes. Cover our children. We ask for a super barrier against not only COVID, but any other, any other maladies or plague that may come our way. We ask for supernatural covering in Jesus' name. Please hear a humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, here we go. Next Monday, 5 p.m., share with your friends, neighbors, colleagues. Next Monday, again, 5 p.m., we will come together in prayer. And we have posted all of our prayers on YouTube. We have posted all of our prayers on YouTube. And the channel, um, the channel for the YouTube prayer, I will post it on the Facebook page, Prayer for Healthcare Workers. Facebook page, Prayer for Healthcare Workers. 
the channel for YouTube, I will post the link. It's Bix Wellness. If you look for Bix Wellness on YouTube, all the prayers, past prayers are posted there. So you're welcome to go back, reflect, meditate, share with a friend, share with a neighbor, and let us know what you need. Let us know what you need. Let us know what your prayer request. Let us know, yes, let us know what your needs are. We are happy to answer any questions for you. God bless you. Remember, you are in his hands. He's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole wide world. Sing with me. In his hands, he's got the whole world. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the healthcare workers in his hands, the frontline providers in his hands, the essential workers too. In his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got our nurses and our doctors in his hands. Our nurses aides too, and his hands, the healthcare workers too, and his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the PT and the OTs in his hands, the speech therapists in his hands, the lab technicians in his hands, he's got the whole world in his hands. He's got you and me in his hands, you and me in his hands, our children too in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. Thank you, healthcare providers, frontline workers, essential workers. Thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you. God protect you. God shine his face upon you. God be with you. Remember to call a friend. Call somebody. Call a friend. Encourage them. Let them know you love them. Let them know you love them. And share the good news of Jesus Christ with them. Be blessed. Thank you for all you do. And if you're working tonight, have a great shift. God bless you. We love you. We're with you. Bye now. Until next Monday at 5 p.m. Bye.